Well, welcome back, ladies and gents, here to Face the TV for Star Series 12. We have an awesome match, Dignitas versus the Ninjas in Pajamas here. The Danes versus the Swedes. And I'm um, here with James, of course. I'm DDK. Let's check out the odds for this one. It should surely be quite interesting, as uh, these are two pretty top teams. Dignitas with a new lineup. Obviously, no more fetish. Got the Carrigan in there, new new approach to the to the team to the lineup. We can see that NIP is starting to favor a little bit on e gaming bets, but not so much on CSGO launch, but it's pretty close, marginal difference there. So I think that will I, I think this map is this, this sorry, this match is looking to go all three. But it is cash and then nuke and then dust two. So it's it's really hard to say how things are gonna go here. Nuke will be an interesting one. That's the thing, isn't it? Yeah. It's just I mean, who knows? Traditionally a strong map for ninjas, so People may feel like uh, Dignitas need to win the first map and then take the third. But again, these are new um, lineups for both teams. So, you know, that's all history now. So we'll have to see what will happen here. Absolutely. I know you're slightly favoring Nip in this one. I, yeah, I'm feeling a bit of Nip lately. Um, feeling a bit nippy. Um, but you know what? Did you actually just do that? <laughs> Whatever. Well, Nippy I means. Apologize. Yeah, I apologise. I don't know. If, I'm I don't sorry. Know if, if that, is that like a British thing, Nippy? Like, is that. It's a bit nippy. I, I, I think it probably is. Okay. For those of you that don't know what it means, it means it's kind of like chilly. It's kind of cold. Um, there we go. Also a bad joke. It's also a terrible pun. Yeah. yeah. So uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning towards Dignitas. Yeah? A little bit. I, 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 liked, I liked the kind of mid-round decision-making we saw from mm -hmm. them. That's true. And uh, I, think, I think they're going to be the stronger team. Well, it looks like uh, Dignitas did win the knife round. So they're going to be starting on the CT side here of Cash. NIP on the terrorist side to kick things off here between these two sides, and uh, these two guys are contending for number the number one the number one spot in Group A. If I can spit it out, so here we go. Looks like a strong movement towards B here for NIP, and Dignitas with three men already in the B area. So this is going to be a little bit surprising here if NIP run into this. And Exist going to already turn the corner, finds one in fact a bit of help there from du uh, from Cajun B to take down Dupree. In they go to the vent room, swarming them right now onto the B bomb site. This is looking pretty good, but Device could do some damage here in the back of the site with the USP. It's going to be able to get the plant, and they didn't clear out the site. That's the bomb down, now Device gets another one. Things very topsy-turvy here with NIP and Dignitas on this pistol as get right. And Freiburg are trying to salvage the situation, leaving it all on to get right now. Zipnix is going to lock down the upper area. So fantastic grenade from him. This device is peering over from the bomb side itself. Get right does have some time to work with here. And Zipnix and device, though, they all have excellent positions. And the bomb, get right with the first frag. One more to find. As device knows where he is now. Battle of the minds, a battle of the aim here between Get Right and Device. There's the peak. Get Right down, almost half his health, and oh, another bit of damage there. Get Right's getting very low. Device with a slight advantage. This is a standoff right now between these two players. So 15 seconds is left, but Get Right just has to get the frag. And he goes around from headshot. Can he catch Device off guard? Seven seconds. Finds Device. Bit of extra damage going in for the kill. Pulls out the knife. Oh, he gets the knife. What a way to end that standoff. Excellent stuff there. NIP win the pistol in the most remarkable of ways. And uh, I'm lost for words. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was a very 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 long battle. That was but that was pretty. <laughs> that was awesome. I think I think oh that has to goodness. be that that could be like clip of the week. Surely that, that's amazing. It's like five seconds. Pulls out the knife. I don't believe it. Good on get right. That was very nice. Yeah, that's amazing. All right, so Mac ten on Forest. Get right, the uh, only man with the purchase on that AK. But that knife kill is obviously a big boon to his his money. He's gonna have an extra fifteen hundred in the bank for that one. And then goes some grenades here on A. We do have nice positions there for Zignitas. In fact, all of Zignitas have turned up here onto A. In goes the MAC-10, though. Forrest racking up the cash. And it looks like it's uh, pretty pretty clean here. <laughs> and Device wants his own back with a knife, it seems. Not going to happen, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm still revenge, laughing though. about that, that round, man. It's ridiculous. Okay, so the last deco coming up here for the CTs. See, uh, we're quite often seeing this kind of this this Makaleli pistol or Forest Mac 10 on these anti eco rounds. Seems to be working out well to boot. 
A scramble from the CCs towards the B site as the frag comes in on A. The cuff fastest flank is coming in. Carrigan and Dupree going to rotate as A gets completely cleaned out pretty quickly by Nip. Got to have uh, surprise, surprise, get right. Just, just lagging behind the rest of his team, waiting for those eventual rotations. But he's not going to win this time as he does get taken out by the P250 of Carrigan. Bomb down. Dupree, last man standing. Being hunted immediately. The bomb has been completely deserted by the Ninja's pajamas. Gets another frag. Doesn't get a third. Bit of money there as we go into this buy round for both, both teams. Yep. I expect Makaleli is probably going to pick up an up with 8,500 in the bank. And that is indeed what he's going to do. What's the name of the avatar again? Um, Ragnar Lothbrook. There we go. I had to think about that for a second there. From Vikings. Excellent Ooh, show. We've got some Doppler business going on here. Okay. R.I.P. Sticker Money, I think his knife is called. This is a very, very strong position here for Device. If they do decide to commit all the way over, though, that remains to be seen. Because Mike clearly is there just by himself to begin with. Device is scanning for the shot. This mid control looking very key here for Dignitas. Nobody is on A for Dignitas. They have four people in mid Ooh, at the moment. I think he saw the barrel there. He's surely going to see this coming. Is Michael Ellie going to know to check sandbag straight away? The Vice misses the shot. His position given up. But there's two more players on Michael Ellie right now. One on Vents. There goes a great Molotov. One close left. Michael Ellie hits the headshot onto Carrigan. Looks for the shot on Device, but gets taken down. Device still in a very weird position. He needs to get out of there. That smoke is going to allow him some extra breathing room, but not for long. Exists over the top. Going to take him down. And that's an excellent advantage now for NIP. One man left for the Danes. Uh, Zipnik's is going to try to make this happen here. But uh, <laughs> it's going to jump into the crosshairs of Forrest. And wow, how did Michael Lele actually survive that? There's like three players on him, basically. Very, with patience. Patience is how he survived. Lots and lots of patience. And um, I think I think his, the first frag was uh, b basically what started the snowball turning into an avalanche there, as he could have easily been fragged if that player had turned around at the wrong time, but it went in his, in his favor, and that's going to put Nip in 4-0. And Makaleli with the pistol again against his anti-eco with the AWP thrown over to Forrest. Does this mean that they're going for double AWP again? If they are, then, you know, Dignitas may be in some serious trouble. We, we've seen what Nip can do. Again, it was a weaker team, but we can, we, we've seen what they can do with two AWPs. And uh, I don't know if Dignitas have an AWP as strong as Makaleli to answer Remains to be seen here. Dupree going to go around. Finds two frags. That's pretty great work there from Dupree. As we have, have to see if uh, it can be recovered now by NIP. Get right, who was holding B storage area, has now come to rejoin his teammate Forrest to try to push this bomb site. Forrest going to go in with the sec 9. Going to get caught in the back, though. Let's leave it to a 1 on 1. And Device does get the second frag. Wow. That's a really big turnaround there. And uh, NIP now. Only three rounds ahead. Yeah, that's going to stop the terrorist money from running away. Dignitas going to be short of money after the buy, but they do have a buy. Again, you can see Nip again going straight for double up. I'm really curious. I mean, this is cash, so it's quite reasonable for it to happen here. More on the CC side than the T side, but I'm quite curious to see if this is like just... If this is Nip now, is Nip, is Nip like pre vac Titan? Are they just going double up all the way? Well, uh... This could this could end up being quite scary long term. If if Nip are capable of consistently turning on double ops when they want to, and they still have the flexibility for Forest oh, to wow. rifle, then who knows what could happen this year. If Dignitas keep playing this kind of a setup on, on B where they're gonna give up vent room fairly easily, I feel like GetRise is gonna start taking advantage of that. We saw excellent work from him yesterday in that regard. But back into this we have a four on two. Significant advantage. NIP just gathering themselves up now that they've uh, gotten those picks. Just want to use the numbers advantage to just make it nice and simple for a clean round finish. Exist already with the frag onto Dupree on the bomb site, and Zipnix is locked out of there. So got to keep that gun alive now. And I do believe. Actually, just check the money quickly here. Yeah. Okay. They're they're pretty broke. They're pretty broke. So NIP have managed to exit the kind of danger zone where Dignitas had the economy to start. To start challenging them, and now, now they can. This is actually this could actually look really bad for Dignitas now. 
Yeah, Nip looking pretty scary at like, the moment. I, I mean, it's still, it's still early days for this team. And, uh, you know, they had, they, we haven't seen them up against a particularly strong team yet, but Dignitas we would consider to be one of those teams, especially with their performances recently. So, again, it is still early days, but I, I think one, one of the important things here, actually, that we must consider is, again, it's, it's kind of like when, when that new Titan um, lineup came about. Um, Nip are looking extremely strong here, but again, this is a this is a very very different style to what people are used to from yep. Nip. So <coughs> it's going to take a. I mean, if this proves successful for them in the short term, it's still going to take a while for the teams they're playing against to adjust and get used to this as well. And then once once people are used to it and everything settles, then we'll see if they continue with a uh, powerful powerful round after round as we see from Fnatic still. The one thing I'm worried about for Dignitas is that. Unless they have a great kind of lower eco setups, they could get into that spiral of like really terrible money where they just never get to get the orbs and all the nades going and keep having to like play out of setups that they're comfortable with to battle back against NIP, putting them at a further disadvantage. But let's see if they can pull this together. They do have a few players on B here. They got the, uh, the CZs in play. That's a good opening up there from Dupree. Nice defensive frag. NIP, though, not deterred by this, able to push back up onto the bomb site and they only have two players left to find. Carrigan is coming around uh, from the A site there, just trying to keep the rifle alive for now. Although he doesn't have any uh, any armor or any nades. And how many rounds have they lost in a row here? I'm not sure. They, I think they've lost one round. Only one round in a row. Okay, then, in, yeah, in that case. So this, would be, this would be the second. Yeah. Got to gotta get that save <coughs> in then. So... I'm wondering uh, if if things continue this way and Dignitas can't get back into this match, then I'm quite curious as to what kind of um, AWP setup Nip would play on the CT of Nuke. If they're going to go for two and possibly have somebody on ramp and someone outside. Uh, it remains to be seen. Lots of interesting questions to ask of Nip here. I'm really, really excited uh, for this new lineup and curious to see how it will continue to grow. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's very, very exciting. It's the kind of... The, the, the fresher, more contemporary new, uh, NIP that everyone wanted to see after NIP had a very rough 2014 um, towards the, the early and mid stages. Either way, we do have the full buy on Dignitas once again. Not a huge amount of grenades, but enough. Device on the AWP, and uh, we see a strong mid presence again from Dignitas. NIP with the standard pick setups, and once again, Got to be careful of uh, get right towards B storage. He's been doing an excellent job, and he even has Forrest to help him out this time, looking for those picks. So it feels like that's the strongest place for them to get a pick here, but it's going to be Michael Lele, who does manage to get a shot onto the guy at Sandbags um, in the middle. Oh, and in fact, it was to Benson, perhaps. I'm, I'm not sure. Either way, that's one man down for Dignitas. And we're seeing a bit of movement towards B here. I think. I think that's very afraid. Look at the rotation from the CTs. They're leaving B. They're not sure where things are going here. They have very limited information at this point. The harassment there from Exist. And look at that. It's, it's doing the job right now. Lots of pressure towards A main. It's, it's rotated a lot of players. Was that the intended effect though for NIP? Because uh, this is looking like a nice setup now for Dignitas to defend this push. NIP are going to go in there. Brute force. Freiburg first man in. That flash was great there. Exists with the second frag, and the bomb goes down. This is looking pretty clean. We have two players from NIP who can cut off the rotating players or hunt for them proactively. Get right in vent. And uh, KGB now forced back to the spawn. So very clean round here from NIP. And this is this really hurts. This really hurts. 7 1 now. Not losing a single man. Bettering Dignitas on the picks, the mid picks, the B picks. Uh, the, the aggressive pushes just just almost looking flawless from time to time. This is uh, very scary for Dignitas, absolutely. Also worth looking at the money on the NIP side, considering they're playing double orps and the orpers have $17,000 between them. Um, Dignitas look like they're going to be in trouble for a while. You can see they are once again on an eco here. But uh, this map is, I mean, it, it's a game of two halves, but... These are these are the two ops on the on the T side. If this continues on the CT side, then this map is going to be a complete write-off here for the Danes. But again, they can definitely still get back into this half. It could easily be 
or maybe not easily, but it could definitely be 8-7. While it looks brutal now, we have seen uh, teams with a massive deficit get right back into the game. So don't count them out just yet, people. And again, it is a best of five, best of three, sorry, excuse me. But I'm uh, going to have passive positions. Not going to want to get naded through that smoke. No armor on any of these players on this eco. He's 50s all round as the first bag. Ah, second one comes in as well. He's going to pick up the AWP as well, which is going to be a significant advantage if he can hold on to it for a few seconds. Manages to escape checkers and get onto the B site where he's going to be with two other people. Let's have a look at what angle the AWP is holding. You can see that that's going to avoid most of the flashbangs being thrown in. And the second threat, the third frag comes in. Bomb is down. And they haven't lost a single play yet. None of them have armor. But yeah, uh, Forrest needs to get those kills. He's probably going to lose this round, but like... If they pick up all those weapons, James, that's a massive turnaround. Hey, it's a bargain bucket at B right now. <laughs> it really is. As soon as that clock runs down, these guys. It's, it's nice how careful Dink Towers are being, because you, you might be thinking, like, why don't they just pick up the weapons? Well, they just want to be careful that they don't get fragged, so they can actually get away with the weapons. And Forrest has just given up the ghost here, and fall, he's falling way back to try to keep this AWP alive. Big result here, Dignitas. They, uh, thanks to Cajun B. Exactly, and as we said, the they, they're not out of it yet. Four free weapons, including an AWP. They need to get that AWP running, though. Carrigan with one kill at the moment. Going to be looking to get back into this game. Has an AK as well, which gives him a significant advantage, actually. You can see the uh, weapons generally favoured towards the Ts. But now they're in the hands of the CTs. So we're going to make things a little bit harder for the Terrors now. That said, they still have two AWPs. All they need is that one click above the waist. And things being very, very passive now. The inter interesting thing is that Dignitas has been quite frequently playing that sandbags position, and I think that's been seen by NIP quite a few times already as well. But this setup is is quite static from Dignitas, not mixing up a lot of mid, but still putting that pressure on. Guy in vents, guy sandbags, and one underneath the boost. So NIP going to go over the top now. Are they going to just find this out again? Because they have they have managed to defeat it before. And Forrest is the one orping over and over instead of Michael Ellie this Surely time. Surely Carrigan can hear the scoping. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he absolutely can. He's not looking for affection though. You can see he's being patient. They're not going to overextend and run and show himself into main. Just going to wait for the push and get the frags there. Carrigan Nip. trying to hold his position here. Yeah. Isn't it being cut down at the moment? But you have to remember that uh, get right is loitering, starting to rotate towards the bomb now, but. The ever dangerous presence. Never really know where Get Right is. Let's have a look at how this bomb is being guided. Carrigan holding an angle in a completely different area. Get Right never saw him coming. And it's going to be Makalele. All of a sudden, that cash in the bank. Not going to be looking so rosy once this next buy comes out for Ninjas in Pajamas. Dignitas seems to have found a solution, at least in the short term. Going to continue just with the one AWP. Still holding on to two of those uh, three AKs they had in the previous round, and again, that's just going to make things a little bit easier for them compared to all holding the M4s. Yeah, uh, Cajun B never were two PD50 frags so impactful on a match. I mean, that that was a massive change, and I think you need to refine their footing here. And uh, this could just be the way to do it. Get right, he's always so good at these B these B storage pushes to find the picks, and that's already an opening one for NIP. Now they have repositioned somebody in the vent room, and uh, I do believe that uh, well, look, looking looking at this uh, setup right now, that aggressive push there from Carrigan, that's going to leave a really open a bomb site here. And Forrest Freiberg going to be taking full advantage of this as we have to push in now. And Dignitas looking very very troubled at this point in time. Look at get right again. Just look at get right compared to on the radar compared to the rest of his team. Like every round, every map, he is just. If you're trying to rotate to the site, he is probably going to find you, and almost definitely going to kill you. Cajun B just spotting someone. Gonna give his teammate a heads up. His te teammate's gonna try and make a break for it to a different area, but he has four hunting him now. So uh, this save not looking that likely. Yeah, device. Uh about to be in for some trouble here. Let's take down Michael Ellie. That's the AWP there as well. Can exist. Pick up that AWP. Yeah, looks like he has time. All right, there it is. So, but the money is still quite good for Dignitas, despite you know 
I mean, it's all because they just picked up five <laughs> five weapons. They picked up so much value in that, uh, that was the previous rounds, previous a couple rounds ago. Either way, eight to three is the score. So it's still very dire for for Dignitas, but they have shown some promise here now. But they don't have an AWP to play with. There's two orbs here for Dign for an NIP on the T side. So it's a lot of picking opportunities for them. Lots of angles they can play with to try to uh, catch Dignitas off guard. And they've been so far fairly successful in finding these opening kills. Uh, Dignitas have not been, been uh, amazing at denying the picking opportunities. And uh, they aren't focusing on middle so much now as they have been in the previous rounds. Yes, yeah, so you can see the 2-1-2 two, two set up from the CTs. Wow! wow. <laughs> Super Mario Brothers <laughs> completely denied by Forrest. Going to be running with a Rec 9 as well. There's a second frag. He is sharp as a butcher's pencil right now of that AWP. Two frags onto the A site. Going to force a rotation from the CTs. You can see Dupree running over towards the A site, which is where the bomb is. Going to take down the bomb, which is going to allow the rest of his teammates to rotate as well. The flank coming in from Cajun B, but uh, is he going to find Get Right? Indeed, he is. Get Right goes down. Doesn't punish the flank that time. Two versus one now, as that nade will take down Makalele. Forrest going to potentially hold an angle to try and even the odds here. Not sure if he knows where both players are. Let's have a quick look from up there. You can see Cajun B not, uh, not giving the angle. He's going to wait for the plant and then take superior possessions, positions, potentially. Yeah, this is very smart there. Yeah, yeah, the pressure's all on Forrest. They can just wait and wait and wait. Forrest has the plant. And there it is. Now they can move. But Forrest has no idea where they are. De Dupree with the surprise angle. And that's going to be the round there for Dignitas. Only two surviving, though. So uh, although they're going to be able to pick up both AWPs, it is going to be a bit of a dent on their money, but uh, there's not too many rounds left until we end the first half. But Dignitas can still bring this back to something that's doable, something that's respectable, as we do see uh, an AWP going on to Carrigan there. In fact, uh, they did drop the other AWP yeah. for another M4. But you, you can see the power of patience there from the CTs. They had the advantage. They had a man advantage. They had a time advantage. Uh, Forrest was on the site with the bomb, had no choice but to attempt the plant, otherwise he automatically loses the round. So they place that advantage, rather than peek and allow him to get a pick and make things easier on him. They uh, just, the, the pressure of the clock is too much, and then he has to try and go for the plant, put himself at a disadvantage, and then the CTs capitalize on that. So, textbook play, but definitely something to note there about patience. McAnally will see Device jumping up and down, but doesn't manage to find a connection there. Device going for the kind of fade away pop flash in mid. Going to take a more passive position to reset the knowledge here. Yeah, again, these uh, two orbs on the T side. You see, NIP have been finding a lot of success in their T setups with the orbs. And it is, it is it does put a lot more emphasis, a lot more pressure on them delivering on the picking game as opposed to some of these more dynamic set plays or dy dynamic movements or set plays on the map. But we are seeing a lot of movement here towards. Yeah, that smoke area. gives them checkers for free. And the CTs have to just assume or guess that one of them may be in there. This is a very dangerous... Oh, is, is this going to... Yeah, look, he's going to look for that position. Very smart work there. That's Dupree now on the bomb site, on headshot, looking for those kills. Gets two quick ones. Might just find a third, but no exist. We'll shut him down as we do have a three-on-three. Three. Bomb needs to get planted now as Dignitas do have a very open site to take. And there it is, Zipnix and Carrigan with two frags. It's all on exist. He's got the bomb down. But there's plenty of time for Dignitas to rally into this retake. And there it is, two now dropped from Vents. In they go. 23 health exists, gets eliminated, and that's a round for Dignitas. And where are we now on the money for NIP? Well, bomb down, but uh, they are fairly broke. Can they actually scrap a force here? Would they actually go for that? We're about no. to find out. No, I don't think so. <coughs> One eco in there. Yeah, these orbs have been so effective, or but not. we said we said Dignitas were, were not out of this, and they've brought it back to 8-5. So this could ah. potentially be 8-7. If they can break Nip here, then 8-7 looks like it's on the cards. Carrigan again going to be rolling with that AWP. See if he can be more effective than Device in this first half. He is going to be holding the B area with that AWP. Is he going to get faced? He's going to find the first frag. as uh, It's going to be a rush into the site with these Tech Knives and Rifles. Dupree, last man to hold here, going to have to give his teammates time to rotate. It's a 4 versus 2 now in favor of the CTs. McAnally just... Patient play, waiting for the CT to peak. Takes down Dupree. Cajun just spots the shoulder of Get Right. Gets the first frag. Zipnik's gonna 
double up with him to clear that round off. And that's going to leave Nip with enough money to uh, go for some kind of buy. I, Potentially Galil and Helmets. I'm not sure what they're going to roll with. I actually really like that idea because if they, if they won that round, Dentas were ecoing on the next. And so they had this spot where they could make it 10 5, essentially. That would have been really sick. Um, and if they, you know they don't need like s amazing rifles and stuff if they're going to go for a super fast play. So it made a lot of sense actually thinking about it, and for them it didn't go for so well for them. But uh, Dintas getting back into the match here, great defensive frag from Carrigan, as we do have device locking down middle as well from short. NIP now with these Tech Nines, they are getting picked off, and this is not what they needed, not what they wanted to happen with these Tech Nines. They wanted a fast pick, a fast push. Uh, instead of uh, having pistols against rifles at range, which seems to be what's happening so far. <laughs> I mean, it, it is a Tech 9, but I mean, this is a lot. Oh to okay, I was going to say it's a, lot, it's a Tech 9, but that's a lot to ask for. But get right, just kills two rifles, one on two with the, with the Tech 9 straight up. So fair enough. Oh, look at the rotation as well. He's just baiting the rest of the team now. But I think they smell something is up, and Dupree is going back towards the B site as the bomb is being planted. Does get the frag there, and that's going to be a free defuse, but plant's not going to matter as it is the last round of the first half. Get right, still just going to loiter and uh, have some fun now on the other side of the map. You see just uh, some deathmatch style dueling there from two players, won't impact the rest of the game. Apart from this, that's that is a big knife. Yeah, so uh, eight to seven. So NIP still with an advantage in a CT side of the map, so uh, definitely it's a spot where. Well, they they're going to be feeling very comfortable, but I'm pretty sure they're going to also feel if they look about look at this later that they could have done better. And Dinatas, they really got thrown a line by Cage and B, picking up the two P250 kills in vent room, which allowed for the round to happen where they in all of them survived. As an IP, I think uh, they kind of panic pushed into the B site, it lost the two more players, and then all those guns for the for the taking. It was a really big swing. Got got Dinatas back into the match. Do you think Dignitas were taken by surprise and, and needed some adjusting in terms of the new NIP style that we've seen here in the last two days? It's possible. There's not many uh, teams that run two orbs on the T side. So it is quite possible. But either way, we're going to have the pistol round now. And uh, already we have the quick B push coming in. The split is happening here for Dignitas onto that side, just as uh, NIP intended themselves on their pistol round. It's like some good opening fracks here for Dignitas as they storm the bomb site. A three on four situation with Forrest up on heaven there, up the ramp. But the smoke is still providing some ample coverage for the T side of Dignitas. And Get Right's coming in from the It's like area. he's almost psychic. Get Right just knows. Here he goes. Great flick oh, there wow. onto Carrigan on the entry. The rest of his teammates going in. Excellent second frag for Get Right. Now Dupree's left alive with no health, and he does get taken out. Forrest has a kid as well, and he has the time to defuse. That is close. Not as close as the first pistol round, which was like, oh, you have a second left and you knifed a guy that for, from Get Right, but it was it was pretty tight. The timing from Get Right was absolutely amazing there. You saw Carrigan was doing the Get Right, and he was just waiting for the flank in the mid area for the longest time. And then when he thinks, okay, the flank's not coming, starts to go through the vent, then Get Right says, okay, I think it's time to go to the vent in mid. Takes down two of them when they were at a one man disadvantage as well. Absolutely brilliant by the man. It's going to put Nip in a two round advantage. Good start for them on the CT side, the more favored side, as we've said before. Things are going to be look difficult for Dignitas now. So they're going to get cut down by the cheese grater that is wow. Forrest. That was perfect rifling there from Forrest. Really nicely done. So cleaned up that round very quickly. Bison still in the hands of Michael Lele and uh, Famous on Freiburg. Famous on Exist. So this is the round where uh, Dignitas get a really big advantage on the picking battles because AKs versus some, well, basically inferior weapons. So often you'll see teams go for an over the top mid push or a delayed mid push in these spots. Oh, this could be pretty bad actually. I respect a man who uses a Bison, but this may be. The uh, unbeknownst to him, wrong opportunity, because that Bison's gonna do diddly squat versus armor and helmets. He's gonna need a lot of shots to the face with that thing if he wants to get a kill here. Here we go, Dignitas up for this A take, looking good so far. Exist is down. Forest from the outer catwalk picks up two very quick frags. That's gonna give NIP an excellent chance to take this back. Cajun B and Dupree are very weak. All that nade just barely, barely avoiding 
Killing Cage and be there. But oh, Bison okay. is actually going to be very good after all, picking up a frag of its own. Excellent work there from DP, but it is short lived. And we have the Diffuse coming in. But that's a bomb plant at least, and three players down. But at that said, they were holding on to Famas's and a Bison. So. Makarele got a Bison frag. Hashtag respect the Bison. Yeah, I'm always surprised that when you know that they get the plant in the first round, that you don't just straight up buy a FAMAS or a, or a rifle. Um, it's confidence. It does give you the ability to have grenades, which is which is useful because you won't otherwise ha be able to. But still, it's an interesting decision. Pure confidence. Because now the scariest round <coughs> is essentially over for NIP. The round where they're kind of on the track, on track, winning the rounds but then they have a bigger disadvantage on the weapons. Now that's over. Now they can have the best setup they want. And in go Dignitas on the push towards this B site. NIP very strong here on these rifles. And uh, this push is going nowhere. Can't stop thinking Cajun Chicken when we're watching Dignitas. <laughs> just all the time, just Cajun Chicken. I don't, I've never even eaten Cajun Chicken. Have you? No. No. And I've eaten a lot of chicken. If you've eaten Cajun chicken, tweet at follow DDK <laughs> and tell him what it tastes like. <laughs> so we're seeing one op either side for the time being. Device back with the op on the T side as opposed to Carrigan, which we saw late in the first half. Makalele uh, not going to be rocking the op. Indeed, it is going to be Forrest. And again, Forrest proving himself to be so sharp with that tool. Yeah. Absolutely. And he's got a nice These angle angles. onto A main here as well. Deep angle. Grenade goes over the top, so he actually knows where one of the players is standing now. So Forrest can decide to go for this if he wants to. But we do have Device still peeking over him. He's going to get the pick on to get, right? Position now revealed. Forrest is now more key than ever, but the smoke does drop down. And that's going to actually allow Forrest to leave the angle. And they can, they can maybe even say, okay, no one's going to push through the smoke. So that is going to give them the ability to have more players on, on middle now, as Exist is able to do, do a alone for the duration of the smoke. It is scary, and when the smoke is starting to dissipate, if it's not going to get re-smoked, Forrest needs to come back immediately. But we'll have to see now what is going to happen here as we have Dignitas lining up for this A play. Dupree in the, in the lurking position here for Dignitas, looking to bust out a middle. Here we go. Can NIP hold on? Carrigan to take down Forrest immediately. Exist in the core boxes. Now very important for NIP's defense. Immediately going down as well. Dignitas looking fantastic. In goes Fryer at Freiburg, wrapping around the side of the site. Michael Ely now the last man standing for the Swedes. And it looks like he is going to get the hell out of there with that AK pickup. And that was excellently done by Dignitas. That uh, is an important round for Dignitas. Let's look at the CT money afterwards. Still a fair amount on them, actually. They're going to have a full buy in the following round as well. So uh, that's going to be really important for them. Able to uh, stave off this terrorist attack. And Dignitas will survive with an AWP. And as you can see, their money is in uh, tatters at the moment. So this will be very important for them indeed. So let's see how things continue here for the Danish side. And if they can close this now four rounds deficit. If they drop a round here, then they're going to be in serious trouble because that may mean two rounds for Nip looking at the money on the Dignitas side. You can see Dupree there with absolutely nothing behind him. So all to play for here. Up on device, Michael Elliott working his storage angle, gets the shot. Excellently done there, baiting out that sh initial kill and now he gets the second as well. Good follow-up. That's going to be a pretty crippled uh, uh, offensive now for Dignitas. What are they going to do now? You can see that they had the mid-smokes looking for that split, but they are two players light into this push. NIP have uh, ample players to go for the defense here. That's a good pick on middle. Zipnix winning the duel against Forrest. And that is an AWPA down there for, di for NIP as uh, Zipnix is looking to get himself some more information here. Pretty much has middle all by himself. It's interesting you saw McAlealy get those two frags, then instantly rotated over to the A site in case that forced the T's to try and push another site quickly with uh, a two-man deficit. 
no push came, so went straight back towards the mid slash B area. You can see the flank coming in from Get right now. Going to tag, but uh, not going to repick too many times. Just run back to the site. Again, 35 seconds remaining. Dignitas need to plant the bomb if they're going to want to win this round. So, going to put himself in a stronger position. Got a crossfire with his teammate as well. Zipnik's going to go down to Get right as uh, Carrigan takes down his sidekick. Carrigan attack from three angles. And that, that was a great round there from Get right. Managing to push A main, uh, figuring out what was going on, and then you know quickly backed away. Didn't didn't try to you know get greedy or anything. As soon as he didn't get an instant kill, he's like, okay, I'm gonna back away, keep myself alive, keep yeah. the advantage, and they shut down the short push. If he keeps re-peaking there, then he di and he dies. He puts his, his team in a very difficult position with not much time on the clock. So Absolutely. much safer to uh, not peak too many times. One of the one of the golden rules on the CT side is don't peak. If you just uh, like if you're on Inferno, you're looking down mid get shot, you're going to put your team at a horrible disadvantage very early on. So uh, it's not a 100% rule, sometimes you do peak, but generally speaking, if you're playing on the CT side and pugs, etc., just try not to peak. And one way to think about it is, in that situation, your team has the numbers advantage, and by playing one-on-one, -on -one, you're giving the T's the best possible situation for them, whilst removing your own advantage by having superior numbers and being able to team play with, in with one another. That's another way to put it, I think. And Look at that. This time device is going to get the better of Michael Ellis. So that's, uh, that's a breath of fresh air there for Dignitas, having an early round advantage. And now mid control. Looking for this A play potentially. Carrigan is the front man here. He's got the bomb as well. Going to hand that off potentially to a teammate. In fact, gives it to the AWPA device, interestingly. And Exist going to spot them jumping up to CT connector there. And Get Right going to put the stop on them in a turn with the Forest as well. Smoke goes down to cut off the angle, but they're going to push on through it and just go straight through those vents. It's get right, it's creeping up below just so, so slightly. Here he goes for the run. Does find a player as Freiburg locks down the bomb site and Cajun B, he needs to get himself the frag on the site. That's it. Good work there. Cajun B even getting a second one. Great response. And it's all on get right against two players. 15 seconds left. Get right with the spray. Not quite. The vice brings it home. And that's another round for Dignitas. And this is was a very important one. We're starting to see NIP's money get a little bit low. That said, only one person survived for Dignitas. So you can see that was a very expensive round for them as well. Carrigan having to pull out uh, Galil. You can see uh, what Zipnix is going to pick up, a second Galil indeed. So money uh, looking horrible for both of these teams at the moment. And with Dignitas at a four-round disadvantage, Nip only three rounds away from victory. This, could, this round could swing it in either way. Look at this, though. Device soon to be matched up against the AWPA. It should be Michael Lele. There it is. And he's going to be able to win out that angle. It's a great angle to play from with the AWP. You can see his teammate has smoked him off now as well. Maybe it's to try and stop him getting overwhelmed by a rush. And they're going to try and rush anyway. But Dupree's going to be out first. And well before Zipnix is, he's going to fall. Zipnix going to trade frag, but get right, going to trade straight back. So strong hold there by the yep. CTs. Very good decision making as well. Often, uh, again, we see people like Days in that position. We saw Makalele in where he gets the first frag, then gets maybe gets second and gets a third. Doesn't really get challenged properly. Um, but we're up against a quite, quite a strong team here. And Nip smoke off the area themselves to stop yep. the AWPA get over getting overwhelmed by the numbers. Then they try to push with the numbers anyway, but they go out one by one, and uh, the trades go backwards and forwards, and it ends up going in Nip's way. And you can see now Dignitas are on that eco. That neither team had any money left in the bank there, and uh, it's going to be Nip taking that round with lots of people left alive. Exist going for the P90 now. He's, he's uh, got that Resident Evil gun. Just another um, for a frag through the smoke. Another point as well about that smoke is that if you're from Nip's perspective, you're saying... You're saying to yourselves, okay, they got they they, they actually went in a face for a frag. What do they want here? They want a coordinated push. So by throwing the smoke, that's what you deny them. And uh, now we have a bit of action. Uh, so these pistols seem to be a bit bit better than uh, you would actually think. Zipnik's running in very bold with the with the Glock, and he's actually going to get taken down eventually. The bomb is going to go down, but Forrest is on the case, and it's going to leave Dupree left alive with a very low amount of health. And the game decides that round is not worth finishing. So we're into the second half now. Yeah. And uh, oh, the next round, sorry, <laughs> I'm getting confused. But 15 to nine, din and the ninjas are looking very strong. And I love the new style that they're playing. I love these new setups that we're seeing. And uh, it's a completely different nip. We, really we haven't seen that many maps because we saw, I think we saw cash from them yesterday as well, but. But cash never used to be a great map for them, really. 
No, you know things are things are changing now. When you look at Nip, you think you think uh, old train. You think Nuke. Yep, it's it's very cool. It's very very cool. I can't wait to see how Nuke is as well. Immaculate now with an AWP and device with the Scout. He is going to tag Forest down to 12 HP, but uh, he has left the building in what could be the last round of game one here in this best of three. And Do I you know who picked Cash? I'm not sure, actually, I'll find out for you, but but one thing I've noticed is that, okay, it's Dignitas House picking Cash, so NIP picking Nuke, that is scary. Very scary indeed. We do know that uh, NIP have a very strong history on Nuke. But, uh, hold that thought. Here we are going to get the push coming in now onto the B bomb site. Very easily cleaned up, it would seem, as NIP have some great angles. They're working in the picks. The grenades a little bit lackluster here for Dignitas, not giving them much of an advantage. And it's going to be the first map, 16 to 9, a bit of a clean out there on, on the behalf of NIP. Excellent play from them. And I'm really excited, really impressed. It like, because if you look at the old uh, NIP, I'm seeing not just the dynamics change, I'm actually seeing all the players playing better. I'm s I, I feel like GetRight's playing better. I feel like Forrest, in the recent matches I've seen him, he's playing a bit better consistently. And I, I don't know, it just looks like they're a stronger team at the moment. So I don't know how, what your take is on it, but for me, they, this is one of the reasons why at the start, I was like, I'm really feeling nip at the moment. Yeah, again, I think you have to take these changes with a, which, with a pinch of salt because they're gonna take these team uh, some adjusting for for, the, for their opponents, you can see uh, Dignitas had a really bad start, but eventually they took they did some adjusting and uh, won the right jewels and got back into the first half. But uh, so so again, you know, generally speaking, as to how strong Nip are going to be um, with this new lineup, it's a it's a longer question. But in the short term, this double orp is is looking really nice for them. It really and, is. and I'm and I'm quite curious as to how their roles are going to change in roles Fifth Laren used to, pe to play, and if that role is still going to exist in this team, or if someone, el if someone else is picking it up, or if the, the, the roles change uh, completely differently because they have an orb, both defensively and offensively. And, and Forrest as well is, 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 I mean, he's always been a very good defensive orb, but he's great offensively, uh, offensively as well, and he doesn't have the pressure to, to really perform necessarily when he's orping, but he just explodes and does crazy stuff. So it's really fun to watch. Uh, Dignitas obviously have a lot. I mean, Dignitas is, is is a much different story because, of course, you know, losing Fed, losing your leader, that's that's an entirely new direction, more dynamics. It's a completely new direction for the team. So it would even be, um, for me, very foreseeable to see, to to have like quite some months before they really find their footing. We know there's loads of skill there. They've had already some great results, but uh, NIP already look like they 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 kind of know how they want to play. That that seems pretty pretty clear right now. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, any, f any uh, final thoughts before we just go to a break? Well, as we said, Dignitas, that was Dignitas's pick. And uh, Nip did pick Nuke. Again, Nip, uh, Nuke is a traditionally strong map for Nip, but this is a Absolutely. different Nip, a very different Nip. So uh, I'm quite curious to, say, to see what that means. And if it means they're stronger, or if it, are we gonna, you know, what are we going to see? That's the question. Absolutely. So guys, uh, uh, one quick note before we go to break. Um, remember, we did just do a, a text interview with RPK on Face It Community, which is the Face It, uh, the Face It Facebook. If you want to see interviews with more players, different players, whoever, basically, could even be with James, then, uh, then just let us know on Twitter, on Face It, or leave a comment on Face It Community on Facebook. But uh, we are just going to take a quick break whilst we set up the next map and get going here for the Star Series 12 Group A match. Uh, match point now for NIP against Dignitas. <laughs> 